Hey everybody, it's me and my shadow. I've got a fun video for you all today that I think you're really going to enjoy, but before we get started, allow me to give a little introduction. I recently had the opportunity to hang out with Leland Shanks of Homegrown Farms and Donnie Replogle, director of the Indian Nation's Artifact and Fossil Show in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We met up at Donnie's home and personal museum where I had the honor to get to be a fly on the wall listening to these two chew the proverbial fat. The amount of knowledge and experience shared between these two gentlemen, and once rival arrowhead hunters, mind you, can be measured in nothing short of decades. But these guys are remarkably humble. They just love history, they're enthusiastic to teach, and they're driven to keep learning. Nothing you're about to see was scripted. I just got the camera out, pressed record, and the rest came naturally. We bounced around from room to room and topic to topic. We were like kids in a candy store. Now, I'm sure you'll see things in the background that pique your interest, and you may wonder why the heck I didn't film it all. Please keep in mind that this is still someone's home and not a carnival attraction. I didn't want to disrespect Donnie's privacy. And besides, he takes most of his personal displays to the annual artifact show that he directs right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So you can go and see a lot of it in person on August 24th. You'll also find Leland there examining artifacts with his microscope, so bring him something to look at, eh? Oh, and you may even see a familiar shadow on the floor while you're there, dot, dot, dot. I highly recommend you try and make it to this show. It's a jaw-dropper, folks. Okay, enough yapping. Let's just jump right into this thing feet first. Right now, Leland is, uh, we've got the microscope fired up, and they're going to look at some stuff under here. I don't know how well the screen will show up on this GoPro, but you guys get the point. But we're going to look at some stuff. And what I'm looking at right here, let me let me just say, I'm looking. If you if, let's get the light. So I, I was playing around with this other day. I've had multiple opinions on what this point is, but I've had three or four guys handle it, and they say, "Well, it, there's no grinding on it." Is this one you found? That's one I found down by home, but two three years ago now, I guess. Okay. And here's the interesting thing about it, and I'm, I'm not making this up. I found the flakes of this thing, and I knew it had to be there, and I persisted, and I found it. Oh, really? I've got some flakes off of oh, this. Oh, wow. I just don't know what I did with them. No, now, didn't. see, see yeah. right there? You can you can see that, that edge. If you look close at it, it's got an angle to it that you can't pick up with your eye. But you can, it shows up on this. See, there you go. See how that kind of changes color right there too on the very edge of the base. Yeah. So this is deer skin So unofficially, since we got it on video, Donnie's in there, got Sissy in there. <laughs> in another part of the museum. Yeah, another part of the museum. Uh, I've had multiple people tell me, oh, it's a knife, it's this. What that is, people. What you're looking at right there is a plain view preform. Look at that overshot. Wow. See those big old overshots? Yeah. And it's an indication of age. Coming all across there. I don't know if any of you guys that'll watch this video, if you know who Tom Westfall is. He's a, him and his wife run the operate uh, Mammoth Run Casting Labs. And I sent him a picture of that and he goes, man, I want to make a cast on that. That's why he goes, he said, it's, it's paleo, it's, it's late paleo, but it's paleo. And that, that really sent shockwaves through my brain because I'm like, well, that's what I thought too, but. You know what we found out today, man, Donnie got to looking at it. See that curve? I sure do, it comes off okay, this let's, way a little bit. Let's flip it around. Still got the curve, but now look. I don't know, let me get some light on again because cameras don't do justice half the time. Mm -mm. If you look at, they were trying to to flake against that curve and straighten it out, and they never got there. Okay. And this is off a big spall. In other words, they hit a big old flake. It might have been that long and that wide when they started, but that's how come it's got that, that curve. That curve was in the original flake, yes, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. Wow. More that's amazing. So here's a pocket cell, right? We, we pick these up here and there. And I really think once these get wore down where they can't really do a whole lot with them, 
we know it's still splitting both both staffs and stuff mm -hmm. with them because they mm -hmm. they don't care if it gets destroyed at this point but i really think they also use these to heat them up the little ones because they could carry them while they're hunting when they're away from camp they heat them by the fire and then you put them in and make their morning tea and whatever it's they're portable. Gonna, for boiling yeah, yeah it's, really it's portable. for boiling yeah. so this one i think also is a pocket cell and i found this in 1974 when i was seven in a place where there was nothing like this hmm. it, it was just in behind grandma's house where i found hmm. a couple arrowheads i stole a little light to it and uh See if we can get under so this, this is just a silt basically but it's a natural type of silt i think they were only using so there's this some one. petting in there too yeah. and you can see the grind marks on there's, it there's some petting in there too well, i honestly believe they were just using this one to heat a pot up around the camp i, I think i tend to agree with it because yeah uh, so it's a heating stone it's it's it? yeah but they're using it but it holds heat also because it's been boiled so many times that so you think it's preconditioned it's, just for it, this? Yes, and wow. they'd use it, and because it holds heat so well, once it, once they're through with it, they'll lay it back by the fire when they get ready to go camping and pick that up, shove it in their pocket. It's going to hold heat for a good hour. So it's the original winter hand warmer. <laughs> <laughs> it's so these, hot hands of the past. Yeah, hot hands. Even these hold heat for a long time. Oh, yeah. These pocket silts, I've heated them up, lay them out in the sun, they get hot, and you put them in your pocket, and they will hold heat for a long time. Sometimes. Time. I'm not interrupting, but sometimes you just have to play with something. Yeah. The only reason and, and you'll figure it out. The only reason I would even notice any of this because I found this when I was a kid, and everywhere I go, I take this rock with me. It's just one of those things I'm attached so to. So you might yeah. charm stone. And so I right notice there. sometimes, like, dude, this thing's hot, <laughs> and it's like, why is that so hot? And I'll put it in my pocket, and I'm like, dude, it'll stay hot for a long. It time. It works for what it's yeah. Usable. And so is this the first time you ever got to see it under a digital not, microscope? I've, I've looped it before, but this is the first time I've seen it under yeah. a digital microscope. That's that's bringing out a little more detail, yeah. Greg. I mm -hmm. do see grinding marks in it. Yeah, pitting and pitting. But Yeah. As long as you mark them as such and and tell it, you know, tell whoever's looking at it, well, that's not really real. Here's a good example right here. Here's a good example. Hand lead. Tell me what you think. It's real. I'm not saying that, but it's been altered. And I can show you on the microscope and you'll see what I'm talking about. This is a, uh, this, well, let's get the light on it a little better. This is a point I found on the uh, Canadian River, and it was broke. I'm just saying so it's the, almost too bright for the. Yeah. There we go. But if, if you just if, for the camera, right? right if you if you kind of if you kind of get the light just right, you don't even have to put it in the scope to, to find it. But 90% of the people would pick that up and think, "Oh man, and that's a killer." Well, it is, but it's been repaired. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can find that. I heard it now. I inherited it's got a glue line in here is what I'm saying where they attach the epoxy to the real point right oh, right there. See that line around the curls? Right here? Right there. Oh wow. Now you you can't you can't see that unless you, you got down that scale. Right there. Yep. What are you looking at now? That's where that epoxy's been affixed on the tip when he who was what's his name that fixed that up? Uh, it does pottery now. Uh Kevin Young. Kevin Young did Kevin that. Young. Yeah, there's a pot. Yeah, I'll he no longer that. does any po any points like that. He quit oh, you were telling me about him. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a show left here. What and did you say this was a, a repro reproduction of? Again, I t uh, I told him well, now, earlier something different on. Well, he just made a blade out of this. He's just working the material that he had. So he made an, a knife out of this, but his flaking style is real evident in this. And this is modern, and I know the guy that makes these. And every time I'd go over there, he'd break one. He broke this down the center. I'd pick the broke pieces up and bring them home, and I'd glue them back together. So I've got 50 pieces <laughs> that he made. I can actually identify his flint work by looking at it because I've seen it. His specific style shows up. But he is one of the closest paleo flakers I know, and he doesn't do slab work. He doesn't. Don't, don't pre-saw it and then yeah, work it. Yeah, he don't pre-saw it and work it. He works the grain of the material like you're supposed to mm -hmm. to get, like if you got cortex on one end, you actually need that cortex to be toward the front 
because the point will be uh it'll have more durable just impact. like yeah just like what you're saying yeah. here you yeah. got more you strength more that strength that the tip it, it was that amazing how they correlated yeah. some of this stuff yeah and uh this guy was amazing at this his name is darren dirksen he was he doesn't flint nap anymore. i've never met him i'd like to yeah i've got some killer stuff he's made yeah, that's he's, beautiful he, that is definitely clovis style flaking that he did on that i mean yep. you can really see it on this side yep and thanks. guess what's going to show up at that show one day <laughs> if it hasn't already and i'll catch it yeah i can tell by looking at it it's like he described yeah. it's called the gray ghost yeah and he slab cut them and they're all made out of edwards church yeah he never played with anything else and his name was uh, reinhardt yeah have you heard of that him yeah, and another guy out of Texas, another guy buddied up with him, they were both making them. Well, uh, but, but it's called lapidary flaking. So when you when you put that slab in a vise, the flakes terminate wherever the vise is gripped on it. It's a dead giveaway, it's not any good. Uh, well, even these eccentrics, that guy was going around to farmers buying these big chunks of busted up flint that was already made and then going back and taking a nail and a hammer and punching in punch flaking it. punch flaking to make these eccentric and he was trying to pass this off it was some kind of language or some kind of alphabet or something it, well, mm -hmm. i've heard so several different theories i've read on them but the even the eccentrics are this i mean you're not going to run across on foot after a buffalo trying to survive carrying a bunch of eccentric letters on you i'm sorry yeah uh, that's <laughs> not practical <laughs> not, what are you gonna practical. Not, yeah, not what do you gotta read when you're chasing a buffalo trying to survive <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is it could be in the agate basin form it could be something i'm not first thing i'm gonna do is look at the base and what makes me think it's kind of clovisy is because the other two pieces that were with it yeah are kind of clovisy yeah but uh it could be simply agate basin dalton i don't know but and there is a little grinding down there yeah there is you can see it right there see that little angle right yeah right there on that base yeah they and, ground it and it's ground correct and if it wasn't ground guys they never hafted it yeah. correct yes now i'm down and if it wasn't and it's ground correct i studied that grinding anyway that's a beautiful piece it, it is. is an interesting piece let me have it back in my hand again it's, stare at it think about it see look at there a different color on that word that's a big old overshot right there it's a yeah. wonder that didn't break it yeah but they knew here's my take too donnie i want you to back me up on this i'm not flapping my lips for no reason here but um i think they knew which material would flute and which wouldn't i think that's sometimes that's why they didn't flute it oh i definitely know they used the grain oh absolutely and they knew better Yep. than we do about how to quarry yep okay now let's look at a piece of this bone oh you got yours out here's here's the what i think anyhow was the idea for fluting a point because it was already in the bone on oh i about dropped that sucker on the floor they're slick yep. you see what i mean Ooh. guys get the flash where the flashlight go see, see that would naturally half better so I think I think they picked up on that, and I think that's where they got the ideal. What I'm saying is that would support that point. We're to talking run, about fluting and to run yeah. deep because you're you're hunting a big animal. You're not hunting a squirrel, so that supports that as that thing travels in, it, the tip might even break, but it's still cutting. Oh. And when he runs off, guess what? You're not going to hit him, knock him down like the you do with a rifle. The flute, and the higher you can haft up on it, the more strength. The you're gonna... more strength and stability you have. I'll tell you something else about an atlatl. They did a study on the atlatl, and they had a bunch of college kids, and they got them out there and let them practice with a bunch of athletes, let them practice with them, and then they lined them up after they got to where they could hit their target pretty good, and they did a test against a compound bow and the atlatl. Them guys with atlatls that hadn't been shooting them very long were impacting almost twice as hard as a compound bow on the impact. It's that force multiplier. People who didn't yeah. even know what yeah. they're doing. 
I mean, they just got to show them, wow. hey, we want you to learn to hit with this. And they just, and they did discover a lot of things that in the past we thought they'd kind of run and take a long step and nail it. That's not necessary. One step's all you need. It, the motion is here. It's here. like swinging a yeah. bat on a baseball yeah. mound. You put this, one foot out first, then you apply yeah. the stroke. The, the, yeah. the plow is like this. Yeah. And we you always, see uh, the hunt primitive guy does that. He just does a, a small, a yeah. small little step basically when he does it's, his. Yeah. And it's also something you couldn't do off of the back of a horse, which is why the tools changed. There you go. Right you had there. to start shooting the bows. Bingo. You couldn't take that step. You you lost half of your power. You might as well be shooting a bow. Yeah. But the Spanish feared that out level. It would penetrate their armor. It would take. There was. They just hated that thing. Wow. Because it was deadly. That was their number one fear when they came in here. Look, those people didn't survive that long by accident. They had yeah. this stuff figured out down pat. Yeah. Don't think for a minute that some clunky dude with long hair and they show a caveman slog. <laughs> no, come on, man. Spare yeah. me this crap. Yeah. These guys were athletes. Damn right they Big were. Time. Big time. Well, you traveled everywhere on foot. Yeah. And they're surviving for a living. That's... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now that's a cool Clovis that needs a restoration. Yes, it does. That's first stage, don't you think? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it, yeah, it's the first stage. Yeah, shows it does the so. thinning where they were starting to. See, see that overshot? Yeah, that's a good, good angle. See, right and, there. and look at there where they, they were setting that base up, getting ready yep. to flute it deeper, but they never it, got there. It probably broke on that overshot. Probably more likely, but yep. anyway. This. BS that they're throwing out there that the paleo people wiped out all the megaphone. Dude, there is no, man, Donnie just talked about this yeah, on the phone. There's no way. There's no way. All I have to do is look at the African elephant. I know for a fact for 500 years, people have been boarding ships to go to Africa to kill an animal to hang on their wall. For 500 years, that's been going on. And the elephant is the number one target. They would love yeah. to have an elephant hanging in yeah. the trophy room. And it's usually a bull and, every yeah. time. And they want something with big tusks. They yep. don't want the little runts. Yep. And they're still there. And they're still they're there. They're still there. So you think about an, a worldwide effort to kill an animal, and it's on the endangered species list, but it's still here. I mean, that's been going on for 500 years. There's no way there was that many people hunting the mammoths. Um, that's just coming here in boats to get out and you know being drove by jeeps to the site where you're going to shoot it you get out pull the trigger cut the thing out and you got a guide yeah knows you got right a guide yeah they're over this hill right, yeah. right, right there we've been watching them for you know yeah. the w last week or and whatever. they go to india too doing this they used right. to well, they used to they've yeah. shut all this down oh man i'm glad i'm glad yeah. they have to we yeah. need the elephants yeah it's like the buffalo they almost wiped them out yeah. but it wasn't because of overhunting by who People on trains to stop and go to shooting. Right. Don't even stop. Sometimes, Sometimes just, yeah, just drive by, down. shoot them, you know. Just slam them down. So if it wasn't for a handful of people, we wouldn't even have any buffalo left. They would have wiped every one of them out, you know. You don't think that ain't been ground on purpose? That's how I sharpened that son of a gun. It's a, it's a point. I know they use them for points. Well, that one's even got a little base yeah, made. See, into this it. has been cut. Yep. I can see where they cut that with a flint flake. Yep. With my with on both sides, they cut that out on purpose. And they don't really care what happens back here, as long as they got that. They've got a working edge. And also, table. I want to show you one more thing. You see how that bone's narrowing to the tip? Uh huh. It's getting fatter. By putting the heaviest part of the bone forward, it's going to go in on the impact better. It's strengthened so, for... Yeah, so the lie, the thinner part's back here, the thicker part's up here. And that can kind of occur naturally on a bone if you get it to where you're coming in. But they're bringing that tip in on purpose where that's the fattest is right there. See where it's the fattest? Right there. Yeah, the tip. sure enough. Yeah. Wow. That's so that it'll take the impact when it shoots in. We, we hope you guys are picking up some good information here because Donnie and I don't like sharing trade secrets very often. <laughs> in fact, we're never going to tell you everything because it's not going to happen. <laughs> just so you know and we learn stuff new every day don't we I, every time i get to handling something yep it's not like you you never quit learning about this stuff it's there if you just know how to look at it yeah. and find it you can take a piece of 
river cane or creek cane, yes. whatever you want to call it, and just slice it yep. and slide that bone right in there slide with the pitch. And, it, it, and it'll seat right in there. Wrap it with some sinew, let it sit for six hours, and you're ready to hunt with it. Yep. And it's going to be light. It'll travel. It'll be really good for taking squirrels out of a tree, and you don't lose nothing. You don't lose nothing. If you lose the point. Because you've already got the bone. You've cooked the animal or stripped the flesh and dried the meat, whatever they're done with it, and they would split them, wouldn't they, yeah. and get the marrow out. That was your cooking oil back then. You didn't have Crisco. You had to make your own. Well, they didn't grind seeds up and use it for oil. They used fat marrow. out of an animal and the bone, the marrow. Marrow, what we would call today lard. Lard, yep. And that was a natural lard taken out of the bone. I do know one trick, like in the winter time, when they kill a big buffalo, they take all the bones that they could, depending on how close they were, yeah. knock one end loose and uh, get the marrow out, go ahead and leave them there against the tree standing up. So when it rained, water would fill them up. When yep. it'd freeze, yep. they'd shatter, you'd Pop make it. bone pins oh, out wow. a lot faster than yep. cutting an entire Pack bone out. Mm -hmm. or, That's brilliant. Or leave them where you know the buffalo are traveling and let them trample them next time they come through. Just and bust splinter them, them all up. Yeah, yeah, so, but anyway, a natural smooth stone. You take the stone. Some people say put it on your tongue. That's what he, I always was told by my grandpa to put one on each side and it makes water. It you'll, generates you'll water in your mouth. Continue. And so I was walking down the creek on my grandma's property and I picked that one up. I put it in my mouth and picked another one up to make water. While I was walking, the creek was dry and I was hunting arrowheads. When I got home and took that out, I got to noticing there's something on it. I tried to wipe it off, it wouldn't come off. And that's when I noticed that's a deer scratched on that. If you flip it over, there's a horse and rider on the backside, really similar to this one. This came out of the same creek as a horse and rider. That's crazy. Which also tells me it was after contact yep, when these were made. That's what we were just discussing. Yeah, yeah. seen the horse. Because they didn't have domesticated horses yeah. until the Spanish brought them. Even if they didn't have a horse at that time, they'd seen a horse and they'd rider. They'd seen a so horse and rider. It, was, rider, it yeah. was in that time period. So. Yep. That's just amazing. These were part of that those sewing kits you were showing me, right? Yeah, these. that's a. a pressure flaker well it's a trigger all is what they call them yeah. it's just an, they just they just that. took advantage of the shape that was already there and it shortened this hand. end though it, it makes a perfect pistol grip in your hand yep in tennessee they dug up some trigger alls in a cave and the guy was showing me the pictures he had the trigger all there at the show we were at the enid show several years ago and he digs in tennessee in caves and uh, he was showing me this trigger all and he showed me a situ shot and in that situ shot behind it was a piece of jawbone exactly like this and i said what's that underneath the picture there and he goes oh we dug two of them up and they were both laying in those and at the time he didn't know what that piece was for and they said we noticed it was a busted up jawbone we could see where the teeth had fallen out we didn't know if they just stored them that way or what we didn't even get those wow. they only got the trigger all so i got to thinking about it and i went through my junk pile i find these in the river it looked exactly like that you can't yeah you can't this fake it. is for making a sewing kit. You put the thread around it. You can store your awl in here when you're hauling it in your pouch. And when you need to punch holes in leather, this thing becomes something you can hold in your hand, lay the leather over, push through it, and not jab your hand. It goes in the holes where the teeth are. And it's sized. And pretty, both of pretty these. Pretty much pre-sized. Yeah. So mu multifunctional, yes. once again. Yeah, yeah. both of these. I, this is one I also had. I, I've left, I don't know how many of these on the river because yeah, I didn't know they I were didn't pick them up, I didn't know what they were. I've seen tons of them just like this. <laughs> I love this one, it's got the bit. Yeah, this, oh, yeah. One, this one has a bone bit put in it. They just put pitch in there to hold that. When it gets broken or dull, they just remove it, put a new one in it. That's just, that's for, bone's that's tougher. That's the coolest thing ever. Bone's tougher, so if you're punching like flint or something, you might want to use bone instead of where this this type, these trigger rolls are very narrow on the end. And you can break it. Yeah. You can just shave this off of a bird bone or anything. Yep. Get, and they'd fire, more, wouldn't they fire hard and bony when the yeah. bone's green? Yeah, and, and you see the black? It, these, it have been, these have been fire hard. Yeah, you can tell. Or yeah. in a fire, even that one. Yeah. This is all evidence this is of being all in fire. Burnt bone picked up over my lifetime. Oh, you can see... Uh, you can see the gray and the black yeah. and a lot of them. And some of these got left in the meat, and cooked and stuff like that, or cooked in the pot, and then they dug it out later. But this one's really got... Yeah. You can see the... And now, th them are selts in the middle, the pocket selts, but, and that's a piece of them. There's other things in here, but that's all my bone from 50 years of collecting. 
that I've just randomly come across a piece of burnt bone and I pick it up every time. So. I've seen something in that other frame or corner, though. Yeah. I'm going to ask. Here's your bone flutes, which really they weren't flutes. They're bird calls. They're animal calls. Yep, they're animal calls. Here's one made out of wood. You're never going to see that again. That came out of the Arkansas River. Wow. It's amazing that it was preserved. Well, it, it got down deep enough in the no stretch. No oxygen down there. Yeah. 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 That's what you got to have. You got to be down there long enough to get to that stage. I know they made them out of wood and reed and stuff like that, but that's a, that's the only one I've ever seen or come across. That'd be really interesting to try to recreate one of those and, and try to listen. And yeah, see that's something one of us needs to do, play around with it. I know one thing, that one makes no noise. I tried blowing it. <laughs> <laughs> Daltons were the 1960s of history. Mm. They embraced change. Mm. They began drills. They started beveling. They diversified on point type. Mm. Up until them, everybody made the same basic shape of point. Yep. Folsom, Clovis, even Dalton at first. Right. Well, it makes the sense. Dalton classics. But then they went into the Breckenridge Daltons. They mm. went in. Greenberg. So if for some reason, Mm -hmm. There was a need to change everything, which I honestly believe it was a need to drill more wood and farm. The animal thing was starting to get to where they had to blend it more. So by farming more, I'm not saying before that no one ever did any kind of farming, mm -hmm. but I think after that, not long after that, the corn came into play and all that stuff started mm -hmm. to move beans, carry things around. Transplant palm trees, stuff like that. Well, w yeah. wouldn't you agree that the pottery wasn't the pottery. thin? It was lighter due to they needed storage jars. They needed storage there you to go. ship it and haul it. There you go. So that comes on later too. But anyway, yep. uh, to, in my opinion, the Dalton is the uh, 1960s of history. That's a good way to describe you know, it. Like that. They just yeah. said, all right, we need to do something different. Right. I've seen. We're looking at one of my personal finds here. <clears throat> so what I was looking at, I'm gonna pick it up. What I was looking at on it is first view have the really hard middle, all right? So we, we see the hard line on the middle. Parallel ridge, yeah. Where, yeah. And I didn't really see it. Let me go hard. grab my flashlight real quick. Okay. So I didn't see the high sturdy ridge at all although i see some ridge there's a little yeah and so when you look in the middle of sand they got a mild ridge on them in places mm -hmm. but they also dive off on the back with the nibbles which is what this one does see where they well, i thought that had, had well i'm not yeah, gonna say yeah. i'm not gonna give away no trade secret yeah. we, we probably said too much already but yeah but it it even that where that's broken it has nibbles on it mm -hmm. and it's not say that this wasn't the first view you'd been sharpened past that but i just mm -hmm. don't see the ridge especially on this side this is more like this than having that ridge in it where the like they're trying to go all the way across right. like they're trying to go all right. the way across even though they don't right. so to me this is a middle uh, this is a mill in the sand which i had found one and i found one in they're both short. They're none of them that. Much. I had one. John Richardson got off with yeah. it. He traded me out of it. I think it's a mill in the sand. I don't feel no grinding or nothing on it. Which some of the first views have grinding, some of them don't. But anyway, so anyway, okay, whatever. Cool. Well, I did. I got. The, I looked at it, but I didn't examine it real close. You know. Let me have you light there. See that? See guys? That that's what. And look look at them pitting in there. Yeah. That sucker has been in that river for. What's the date? What's Middle the sand should be in a Dalton. Age and culture, 9,000 right to 7,500 B.C. Yep. Right in a Dalton culture. Yep. It's desolidified, which makes me think it's part of that Bigsby Black band, of, even though it's not really black, a type of Pitkin. It's, it's come out between the limestone or it wouldn't have that. That's, right. that's where that's getting that from. The quartz inclusions, yeah. that what you're so, talking about? But for lack of term, just going off of color, I'm going to say that was a similar area in Kansas. So this is a Florence in my book that come out of limestone just like the Bigsby Black comes out of limestone. That was my knee jerk when I picked it up and fell up and looked at it. I said, that, that looks like them. That's Florence. Florence, Florence A or B. There's it's, four it's, types. It's, it's A, I think. Yeah. 
And they didn't heat treat that, guys. That's been worked yeah. raw. But the patination from the limestone is what changes it to make it look like it might be a real There you go, right there. there yeah, you go. so the tip is what's not. The tip's the only thing it really. It had done that's had. the kind of telltale yeah. there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. See, then, the rest of this is basically cortexual material. You can see a little yeah. bit more of it on the base on this side. Yeah. Right mm -hmm. Yeah, where it comes out of it. Yeah, yeah, it right. comes on the other side now, yeah. so it, it kind of transitions yeah. back to the pure yeah. form. It makes so that, for a beautiful little band. Oh, here. man. That desolidified. It probably didn't look like that. When they made it, it was all gray. And then over time, it desolidified. Oh, okay. Well, guys, I've found, I've, I've found one or two. Donnie's found one or two. But I'm gonna tell you something. That's the biggest damn SOB I've ever seen. Milton sand. <laughs> that is the biggest Milton sand oh, I've ever seen. That's saying it, something, bro. It made my day. Oh yeah. man, it made I bet. My day. Yeah. I'd have still been having to clean my drawers out after finding yeah. that. There was a group of guys that came walking. Watch you. Here's the newly Ooh. identified. Ooh, look at that. Looks like when I haven't washed my face in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it looks like me with a bad razor blade after shave. <laughs> but now this is. See, look at that. You got you got a sand grain stuck in that. That's what that is right there. That's a sand grain and wow. stuck. And it, it can't come back out unless you dig it out of there, which you're not going to do that. But This microscope is the coolest thing ever. I, I, I just love this. I think it's indispensable. Let's look at this side because this side's got even more. Look there. Come here, Donnie. Look at this. Look at that hinge. Look, here's what you'll see too. See that hinge? Yeah. See where that's, there's there's deposition in it? You can't fake that either. You can try, but that's what oh, you're going to see. Oh, there we go. Man, that, and that, look how much more polished it is. We didn't think it was that polished. You get under here, now you can see polishing all over that, mm -hmm. that grainy stuff. All I can say is, Aaron, that's you'll never find another one like that. If you find a melon sand, number one, if it ain't broke, you're lucky. It's, yeah, yeah. It ain't very long. I've got two. That's it. In yeah. 50 years of hunting, I found two. It, it's it's one of the best pieces I've ever had my hands on. <laughs> Seriously? Good dude. Donnie, back me up on that. It's nice. It's a nice, it's the best melon sand I've ever handled. Now, they get bigger in other places, Texas. Well, I, I didn't have a, I didn't have ID on my mind, but when you got in there and got to looking at it, you thought, hey, wait a minute, let's get some books out here and compare it. Yeah. That's what you do, guys. It, 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 if you dead nut something, and it's like Perino's done. He said, hey, send me that piece back down here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, something didn't make sense. Something didn't make sense. Yeah, something in there. Right there is desolidification on a piece of Florence. This is Florence right here. Yes, right? definitely. I know this is from Kansas. Science at work, friends. Yeah, that that's is really a cool. material match. Yep. To that See right surface. there? Yeah. That's that's it. Right wow. There. Oh yeah, that's really yeah. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't see that with your eye. No. But, and, but that is definitely Florence. Yeah, I've wondered about this for a long time on, on the material. That's a Florence like, material wow. to be solidified. On. Cool. Ooh, look at that material. Shiny as a dime and a goat's butt. Right there, that's what I'm looking for. See that darkened little hole? Yes. That's where a quartz inclusion is darkened with age. That's what you want to see. Oh. That's what you want to see. Oh, I see some see more. See some more? See that? Yeah. There's a more pronounced one. I don't know what that is right there below it's it. It's a pit. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, some kind of pit, surface pit. There you go. Could have been very. Aaron, you got to stay your hand now, yeah. do today. So that, see if you can get a little more that focused. That could very well be. Uh, Actually, you might desolidification be... on something yeah. and that material popping it out. That's almost uh, like reminds you of Hexton solidified sandstone. What's going on here with these dark orange spots? That's what I've always that's, been wondering. That's that's uh. That's uh. Where does that, Aaron? Well, right. See, you go that way. Maybe just to. Well, it's hard to see on the microscope. There's one. There's there's a couple. What what just happened to her light? Oh, there, there it is. There, there it, is. it is. It's just a. Uh, it's just a coloration feature of that material, and, and see how that's pitted and, and got deposits in it. Yeah. You, you can't fake that stuff, it's, guys. It's got a couple spots yep. like the see up on the tip yep. there you too. Can't, you can't fake that. 
they tried Bounty Sam with shoe polish, walnut juice, and first one thing or another, but you cannot fake that pitting. Nope. In other words, it, in other words, it's not reproducible. Even sandblasting will not do that. No, they tried it. Those guys tried to do that to make them look rubber polished, and you just can't fake it. All right. Well, this was a surprise. <laughs> Leland's gone and done it. He gave me this arrow earlier, which was cool enough. Paper. It's awesome. He made this. That's made out of pigeon berry. It's a, it's a type of dogwood. Here's my favorite. And he just gave me the bow to go with it. He made this. You can tell I made it because it's all clunky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I pulled it back. It, it, it draws. That's awesome. Got me something for my pancakes and waffles here, too. This is cherry what I top. made right here. I made one out of bamboo, too, so you can see how they would do something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, this is the one Darren made. Now, what wood is it? Osage? This is Osage Jones. I thought it was. I thought. You just got to string this thing up and shoot it. It's it an cuts? amazing bow. Oh, I bet. It shoots. The right through. length, too. Yeah. How long is that? Is that six foot or? Five. I think six foot. Five. I'm just five eight. Okay. Just so you guys know, if you're gonna tinker around and make one, always cut it the length you are tall, and you can always shorten it. Yeah. Okay. So I haven't strung this bow up in a long time. Let's see if I can do it. I'm gonna say you got to step through. Yeah. There you go. Let's see if I can do it. I don't like the tip touching the ground. No, because well, along with some carpet should yeah. hurt. But I don't care. Well, it's got the pound weight on that. What does it draw? Yeah, I, I draw, I have a 28, 29. If you notice, here's another feature that the ancient people used. They'd put a piece of horn or bone in yeah. there, and that wouldn't wear down like the wood. Is that though. bone or horn? That's bone, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, they wrapped that's it right beautiful. Let me see what. Good Lord, that sucker's drawn 75, 80 pounds. You, can shoot you that hear my shoulder crack? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Man, that's too heavy for me to shoot. I love that. Bow. That's really cool. You could hang out with that draw weight bow. Yeah. Guaranteed you could. Man, that's pretty. Donnie, that man, there really is nice work. When we picked that up, big old piece of bow dart, it was in my grandma's in the creek. It had fallen over the creek. Yeah, well, I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank Donnie for having me over again and, and to this Gosh, this amazing in, place and Come on and over. sharing his home and uh, his time with us and and Leland thanks for for you coming better. out all the way out here too and yeah. uh, just getting to sit here and listen to you guys is <laughs> it's a gift really you know it's an honor for well, me to be here. Well, that's what I've told you in the past and you kind of doubted yourself on some things and I said look. I'd love it if I could just have a chip and plug in, download it, but yeah. that ain't the way it yeah. works. Yeah, you gotta learn it. And AI ain't gonna help you guys on this stuff, so forget yeah. that. Yeah. You know. But well, we thank you guys for yeah. watching this video, and if, if it inspires you to do something like this, go ahead. But yeah. if if you request another one, because we, we haven't even scratched the surface. We just started over here. And yeah. what you should really do, if you enjoy the videos, come out to that artifact show. That's and right. And talk to both yep. of these gentlemen August here. August 24th. That's right. We're going to have our 19th annual. Maybe center. And right? I want to thank Sissy while we're on here. Sissy, uh, you just say something. Tell, hey. tell them how. <laughs> She's had to listen to us blabber here. I don't go anywhere. Better part of two or three hours. I don't go anywhere without Sissy. Pretty much. I don't yeah. go anywhere without a rock. Thanks for putting up with us. <laughs> <laughs> I listening to y'all and looking at all this stuff. She, I love it. She hadn't spoke up, but this girl right here, she can just almost look at one. You can put them side by side and ask her, do you think one of them's any good? Nope, it's no good. Yeah. That's so, better than what I can do. I'm getting you're getting married. married. Being married at 22 years to him, I'm getting married. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I've been rock hunting for since 1974, so... This July will be 50 years. Wow. And wow. I've been going to artifact shows for 35 years. Yeah. And I've handled a lot of iconic historical artifacts oh, over the years. And so that's how you learn with artifacts. Go where the real ones are yeah. and handle them. Yeah. And it'll tell you what's fake. Yeah. You learn by handling the real stuff. I apply it to counterfeit money. Know what a counterfeit is yep. and you're, you're in good shape. Yeah.
get a study of counterfeit a yeah. little bit. You, you can't, you know, most people see fake dollar billers, well, the dollars, they don't care, that's why they make fake hundreds, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Right. So that's the way I apply that yeah. to that. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for the information, the time, fellas. It's been a blast. Well, right? it has. I, I loved right. it. Loved every minute of it. Yeah. Rock on. Rock on. <laughs> there we go. Has to be just in the right spot, doesn't it? Yep, you gotta tune them out. That's all of that song I know. <laughs> I'm gonna get one at the show if somebody comes up there. I wish they found that. Oh, um, Huxley really made himself it, at home. He did this, he just settled him. He was around all around here. Now he's sitting up here just being calm. Yeah, Daddy knows. <laughs> <laughs> this is my little buddy, guys. And I, I'd go crazy with that. You see him in the homegrown farms. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing the flute. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, but here again, guys, the the science is 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 really getting to the point now uh, uh, that it's really helping out. Well, we're look how accessible food, it is. That's eighty nine dollars. You know, we're gonna. Yeah, well, look, okay. we're not sponsored by this company. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to reach out, if well, they want to reach out, yeah, go right ahead, you know. So.